Right, you join us here today at Float Fish Farm at Peterborough and we're having a day on the feeder, fishing method feeders or the open alloy feeders. Both have the day, both brilliant methods, both positive methods. As you can see, we're catching a few carp. Um, all I've got is a pint of pellets, half a bag of ground bait, rod reel feeder and you're away. It's a brilliant method and you can catch some huge weights on it. Um, as with any other method, although it is a simple method, there are various things to consider. Um, which feeder you use, they both present the pile of bait in a slightly different way, um, which on the day each, each has its benefits. Um, method feeders probably a more aggressive way of feeding. The open feeders leave a smaller, more compact pile of bait, so you have to consider whether you're fishing for £20 or £100. Like I say, at the moment I'm on a method feeder and as you can see I've just hooked a carp. Um, we haven't been here long, we're getting plenty of bites, plenty of liners. 11 foot horizon carp feeder rod, probably a 40, 45 yard chuck. Um, got to get your set up right, some days you'll need bigger, heavier rods and heavier feeders for bigger chucks. Other days like today, just an 11 foot rod, 4,000 reel, just a nice comfortable chuck. Get this one in the net. Nope, nearly. Play, playing around with hook baits, that's an important thing. Various colour wafters or various size of pellets. Um, just have a play around with it on the day and see which is best. Same with feed, some days pellet will be best, some days ground bait will be best. Some days a mixture of the two. Um, you just need to have a play around and see what's best on the day really. Very, very strong fish. I'm using our pre-tied hook lengths. This one's an 0, 20 to a 14, because I'm fishing quite large pellets. And we're getting plenty of bites. There we go, a lovely, clean, strong, hard fight in common. Quick look at the tackle we're using. It needs to be strong, reliable, and robust. Um, targeting carp it takes a lot of abuse um, so everything strong everything reliable we're using the 11 foot horizon carp feeder today it comes in 10 11 and 12 foot versions all are two piece rods so they easily break down so you can leave them set up with with our new system we can just have the stem ready on the line so i can put a method feeder a bomb or an open feeder anything i want on that so i just leave it set up with that on um, reel is a 4,000 horizon, comes in three, 4,000 sizes. 4,000 is perfect for the distance we're chucking today, probably 40, 45 metres. That's also the reason I've chosen the 11 foot rod, just an ideal length for that cast. Line is 020, eight pound in the horizon sinking mono, extremely thin for the braking strain. It just casts like a dream, creates no resistance. So a nice gentle lob is getting us 40, 45 metres. Very strong, you won't break eight pound. Just a strong, reliable, simple setup. Quick look at the feeders now. Obviously we've got small, medium and large um, in both the methods and the open feeders. What you choose on the day largely is dictated by how good you think the fishing's gonna be. If it's prolific, then obviously the large feeders introduce more bait, get more fish there. Harder days, particularly in winter, the tiny little open feeder produces a really compact, small amount of feed on a hard day. That's, that's a brilliant feeder. Today I've opted for the medium. We're catching plenty of fish. It's not prolific. Um, so I just feel that the medium size is introducing just enough bait to get them there, but not too much. Um, with this system, everything interchanges. Literally, you can leave your rod set up just with the stem on. So when you get there on the day, you can then decide what you're gonna do. And obviously during the day, you can swap and change between them. Simple as that, simple as that. It's literally that quick. So swap and change on the day, see what's best. Um, also, you've got the option of using an elasticated stem if that's what you prefer. Some venues obviously don't allow it, but that's an option if that's what you prefer. Same again, all interchanges. Um, the, bo the bombs, 
20, 30, 40 gram, they all interchange as well. Obviously more winter time or bomb and pellet. Um, inline leads are all the rage at the moment. I think they offer that little bit more resistance on the bite. Um, Moulds, obviously the open feeders, we don't need the mould, but for the method feeders, use the mould. So all these options you've got and you just need the one rod set up to do it. So swap and change on the day and see what's best. The fish and commercial fisheries change their habits and their minds of what they want to eat from day to day, even on the same venue. You can't instantly know it's micros, you can't instantly know it's ground bait or a combination of the two. So what I do is give myself the options. Obviously I've got neat micros, neat ground bait and a mixture of the two. On certain days one will massively outfish the other, some days it doesn't make much of a difference. Um, but have the three options there and just feel your way in um, and see which is best on the day. I also have a tub of water on the tray, on, especially on hot days like this, but on any day your bait will gradually dry out and deteriorate, but you don't want to be going and putting big lots of water in, so I literally have a tub and I can just wet my hands and run it through each of them just to keep it, just to keep it right. Too wet or too dry and it simply on the method feeder won't stick or will be too sticky. If you're having problems getting your bait just right, then that's probably the time to go on to the open alloy feeder. It still has to be reasonably okay, but these are far, far easier to load than a method feeder. So yeah, have the three options available to yourself and play around and see which is best on the day. Hook bait. The list is endless really, so I try and keep things relatively simple. Um, go-to bait generally is hard pellet, got a mixture of 8 mils, 6 mils, some red pellets in there as well, um, so I'll have a play around on the day and see which of those is best. They're the easiest bait to fish because they're hard, so when you're compressing your feed onto the feeder, you can't break it or squash it, you can catch multiple fish on the same pellet, so that's generally where I start. There's a trend and lots of anglers at the moment are using wafter type hook baits, my personal favourite that is taking venues around where I live apart at the moment are pink, semi-buoyant. Um, so I'll always try them, I'll always have those on my tray and just lately, like I say, a, a pink one of those has been the bait I've caught most fish on. Um, I'm doing it more and more at the moment, I'm fishing a method feeder down the edge, especially on venues where there's big fish. Find you're getting, if you're feeding ground bait, you're getting a lot of fish come in your peg, your pole rig's getting pushed around your peg and it's not right. So I've just been underarming a little method down the edge because I'm feeding ground bait and dead maggot. Then I'll simply just fish dead maggot on the hook as well. So you're doing what you do on the pole, but you're just eliminating all those liners and foul hookers and getting the fish. Wait longer for a bite probably, but when you get a bite, it is a proper bite. While we're talking about hook baits, obviously we need to talk about hook lengths and hooks. I'm now currently using the pre-tied matrix hook lengths you get the super stops or the bands there's a variety of diameter line size hooks obviously talking about fishing maggot down the edge on hooking that straight onto a hook um, but all your pellet your wafter type fishing if you're fishing corn or meat these hook lengths will cover all your fishing the super strong super reliable which is exactly what you want for method feeder fishing my go-to bait uh, hook size really is 018 to an 18 with a six mil pellet or a wafter that is absolutely spot on obviously if you're fishing meat or corn you can go with slightly bigger hooks so a 14 that's 2020 all reliable all strong that's exactly what you need oh Something else to consider, once we've cast out, we need to be comfortable. So me being tall with extra units on the box, I've got an adjustable butt rest as pretty much as high as it can go. Um, just saves me having to reach down from a rod, it's there, it's where I want it. So a good adjustable butt rest, nice and safe, it won't come out of there. Um, right height, 
so that the hands are free, you can move around, you can do stuff. Um, most importantly, you can get comfortable. You're sitting like this sort of for a day or five hours if it's a match, so you need to be comfortable. Similarly, the front rest, nice, strong, sturdy arm, adjustable, we can get it just the right height. Um, and I think quite important with carp is we've got a head with a stop on it. Um, it actually comes with another stop if you want one on the other end as well. If it's a windy day and whatever, you can have one on the other end as well. But because we might be moving around and doing other things, we all know what carp bites are like. That can't go anywhere. Um, tips. You want to get your tip nice and low to the water so it's not affected by wind or tow or anything like that. On the subjects of tips, I like quite a soft glass tip. I've got an ounce and a half glass tip on there. I like a light tip just so it absorbs any line bites you're getting or any wind, that will absorb it so your feeder stays put where it is. That's a very important thing with method feeder fishing. The feeder has to stay still. So a nice light tip just to absorb any movements there might be and just wait for your proper bite. On the subject of bites, a bite on the method feeder is a proper bite. It's clearly the fish is on. You don't need to strike. You just literally pick up and start playing the fish. Um, ignore all the liners and little taps. Just when it goes, just pick up and play the fish. Well, we're coming to the end of today's session. So I just thought we'd go through what's been best really and how and where I've fished. Um, neat pellets on their own has definitely been the way to go with a hard six mil on the hook and casting tight to the island has definitely been better than fishing short of it. So you'll see we're going very tight to the island into not much water and I think that's key today is that it's a very warm muggy day. The fish want to be in the shallow water near the island. I have tried dropping short into deeper water and it's just not, not been as good as fishing tight. The way you do that when you first get to your peg is to have a chuck out just with a bomb on its own. Um, we don't want hook lengths or some fisheries don't allow you to cast out empty feeders. So have a chuck out with the bomb first. Don't aim to get really tight, just drop it maybe two or three metres short, take another line off, clip up again, go out and just gradually work your way over purely to save yourself from getting snagged up on the island and losing everything. In winter, don't automatically chuck tight to the island, especially in winter and sometimes in summer, the fish will be happier slightly away from the island. So just think about what the weather's like, how deep it is. So don't think you have to chuck down the same hole all day. Well, lovely session here on Two Islands Lake at Floatfish Farm. Just goes to show, get your methods right, get your mixes right, get your feeder right, get your gear right. What a lovely day's fishing you can have. Mm -hmm.